All right, so we're going to go over static pressure, how to get static pressure, and what is good static pressure for an air handle, okay? Specifically, we're talking about total static pressure. All right, so we need a manometer. This is a Testo probe, and I have the Testo probe app. So we have our manometer here. It's hooked up to our Testo probes app, and this is giving us our total static pressure. So we have our supply up here at the outlet of the air handler, and then we have our return, our suction. We just have it stuck in here in this uh, filter door here. And so the total pressure, positive plus negative, equals 0.38. So we're perfectly in line with the specifications of this unit. So here's our chart for the unit. We have a constant torque motor. So it's an H1T, which means constant torque. So that's an X13 motor. Right over here we have a three ton, and we're gonna say no heat, because the other option is 18 kW, and we have less than that, so we're gonna say no heat. And when we measured with the current fan speed, it was 0.36, which is somewhere in between this column and this column. So right here when we cross-reference, we're gonna have 1199 to 1165. And at 400 CFM per ton, which is what we want to, which is what we want to uh, set it for, that's just about right. So we want speed tap four, which is what we had it on when we got that measurement. If we had a higher static pressure than 0.6, right here it says 0.6, then we would have to jump up to speed tap five. You see how these are blank right here, and then you get to 0.6, and then you have to kick it to speed tap 5 in order to achieve the correct CFM for that static pressure. So we're set up just right at 0.36 speed tap 4 for approximately 11.99 CFM. Alright so we interrupted the low voltage on this and we have to do what's called uh, jumpering it. So we have power to it but it's not turning on because it's in a 5 minute delay and we can bypass that 5 minute delay on these condensers just through the defrost control board. You just have to jumper the terminal that says speed up. All right, so this unit came on uh, before the five minutes, but if you had to jumper this out and bypass the five minute delay, here's how you do it. It's right here. There's a little terminal that says test, and you just touch it like that, and it'll come on. So now that we have the static pressure correct and the airflow correct in this unit, we can tell that it's actually overcharged. We can tell because right here, the subcooling is 14. That's high, even by any measurement on the door. 14 is much too high. And our superheat is 18, which is actually pretty good. So we're gonna see if we can get this subcooling correct by letting some refrigerant out of the system. Also, this is 147 PSI, which is good for a suction. It's a evaporative temperature or coil temperature of 51 degrees, which is really actually good. So we're gonna see what happens when we adjust the pressures. All right, so you have to get the outdoor temperature. And what you wanna do is get it to where the air is passing by the coil, but you don't wanna get it too close to the coil. 10 inches is ideal, but it's about as far away as I can get it. And it's 92 degrees out here. Okay, so we have to cross-reference this here. We have an RH cabinet. This is a 1436 condenser, 14 sear 30, uh, 3 ton. We come down here, we have 92 outdoor temperature, which is in between 82 and 95. So right over here, we want between 11 and 12 subcooling. And right now we have between 11 and 12 subcooling. Now you also want to cross reference over here. The outdoor temperature is 92, so it's close to 95, right? When you come on over here, the the liquid line should be 320 approximately, and the suction 135. So this one is 368 and 146. So if you look at the pressures, it's actually too high. But my subcooling is good. 
My superheat looks awesome, so I'm just gonna leave it how it is.